Hey, Booktube Sean here, and this is part two of uh, my end of the year book haul. And I actually think all of this is no. There's a, there's a couple I got in this month's Book of the Month Club box. Um, so let's get into it. And uh, the first book I want to talk about is uh, Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. I got this. Uh, I got this has a a backlist book when I rejoined book of the month and um I'll talk about I'll talk about that in the next book um but this has been all over the place um this is about uh a oxygen chamber this pressurized oxygen chamber thing that explodes and the family who the doctor and the family who created it gets sued it's a uh, it's supposed to be uh a uh this is the court case the events leading to and then the court case uh from my understanding um i've heard such fantastic things about this um I, i'm expecting it to probably be one of the 48 uh of the long list for the booktube prize which is one of the reasons i grabbed it um so uh, I'm hoping to be able to get to this this year, and I definitely will if if it's a if it's on the BookTube prize long list and I get assigned it. Um, but that being said, I uh, the reason I jury joined the um, Book of the Month Club was because I knew I was going to be uh, judging rounds of the BookTube prize. Not necessarily I signed up for all rounds, but it doesn't mean I'm going to get all four rounds. Um, it's a random selection and uh, I may not, I may not end up judging all four rounds. Um, but, uh, I wanted to start getting books that I thought might end up. I just wanted to get some things in my possession already that I thought might end up, uh, on the long list so that if I got assigned them, there would be one or two less books I needed to acquire to read. Um, and I rejoined when Tanahashi Coats the Water Dancer was on because when I rejoined, I could get a book, my book for free. And so I re really, I rejoined when I did to get the Water Dancer for free because I really wanted this book. Um, this is Tanahashi Coates' debut novel. It's a speculative fiction. Um, I want to say. I don't know when it's set. Um, I'll just read it. Young Hiram was born into bondage. When his mother was sold away, Hiram was robbed of all memory of her, but was gifted with mysterious power. Years later, when Hiram almost drowns in a river, the same power saves his life. This brush with death brings births an urgency in Hiram and a daring scheme to escape from the only home he's ever known. So begins an unexpected journey that takes Hiram from the corrupt grandeur of Virginia's proud plantations to desperate guerrilla cells in the wilderness. From the coffin of the Deep South to the dangerously idealistic movements in the North, even as he's enlisted in the underground war between slavers and the enslaved, Hiram's resolve to rescue the family he left behind endures. This is the dramatic story of an atrocity inflicted on generations of women, men, and children, the violent and capricious separations of families, and the war they waged to simply make lives with the people they loved. Written by one of today's most exciting thinkers and writers the water dancer is a propulsive transcendent work that restores the humanity of those from whom everything was stolen um yeah i've heard fantastic things about this i knew i wanted this book and when i saw i could get it i could rejoin book of the month club get it for free and get some backlist books that i thought might end up on the booktube prize long list uh, i kind of jumped at the opportunity so um that is that um I've got, let me do these in one shot, almost. Uh, I got a couple of books. I don't get a ton from publishers, especially since I haven't been reading a ton this year. This past year, um, I haven't been getting sent uh, a, a bunch, which is completely understandable. I, you know, I don't ask for anything. Um, I don't purposely, I, I don't write emails to publishers to request things. Sometimes I get reached out to and I say, yeah, that sounds, that sounds great. I'd love, I'd love to feature it on the channel. I don't ever promise a review. Um, but I always say I'll feature it on the channel, but I've gotten a couple in that I haven't gotten featured on the channel yet. Um, 
uh, and they are The Will in the Wilds by Claire Ann Holmberg. Uh, this is Anna knows to fear the mistings that roam the wildwood near her home. When one tries to kill her to obtain an enchanted stone, Anna takes a huge risk, fighting back with a misting of her own. Michalis's help isn't free. His price, a kiss. One of the power to one with the power to steal her soul. But their deal leaves Michalis bound in, bound to the mortal realm, which begins eating him alive. Only Enna's kiss, given willingly, can save him from immediate destruction. It's a temporary salvation for Michalis and a lingering doom for Enna. Part of her soul now burns bright inside Michalis, making him feel for the first time. Enna shares Michalis's suffering, but her small sacrifice won't last long. If she and Michalis can't break the spell binding him the, to the mortal realm, Michalis will be consumed completely, and Enna's soul with him uh this come this actually comes out today as i'm filming this uh january 21st so january 21st today it's out now uh the will in the wilds by claire ann holmberg uh, this is one it it just showed up on my doorstep uh so thank you uh amazon i believe it's amazon 47 north which is a amazon imprint so thank you for this uh same thing with um this book that came out in October. So, um, I may, and I may have gotten this in a video already. I'm not sure. But again, this is uh, from 47 North. Uh, and it is The Vine Witch. Uh, I know it has been featured on a few people's channel. Uh, Russell and Ink and Paper, Paper, Ink and Paper Blog, I think, got a copy of it. Um, a couple other people have seen it on their channels. Um, For centuries, the vineyards at Chateau Renard have depended on the talent of their vine witches whose spells help create the world-renowned wine of the Chancellor Valley. Then the skill of divining harvest fell, divining harvest fell into ruin when the sorcier, uh, Elena Borne, Boreno, I'm horrible with names sometimes, was blind, especially in fantasy. Some of the fantasy names are impossible to pronounce. Um, was blindsided by a curse. Now, after breaking the spell that confined her to the shallows of a marshland, and weakened her magic, Elena is struggling to return to her former life, and the vineyard she was destined to inherit is now in the possession of a handsome stranger. Vineron Jean-Paul Martel na naive, naive, naively favors science over superstition, and he certainly doesn't endorse the locals' belief in witches, but Elena knows a hex when she sees one, and, a, and the vineyard is covered in them. To stay on and help the vines recover, she'll have to hide her true identity, along with her plans for revenge against whoever stole seven winters of her life, and she won't rest until she can defy the evil powers that are still a threat to herself, Jean-Paul, and the ancient vine witch legacy in the rolling hills of the Chansal Valley. So that's The Vine Witch by Luann G. Smith. Uh, came out in October. Uh, so grab a copy um, and this one is one I was emailed about and um, I accepted a copy of and I had intended to read it by now and I haven't um, Doomsday Furnace Tales of Cataclysmic Wonder by Brent Michael Kelly and this was sent to me from Omnium Gatherum Press uh, who uh, I don't know I don't know what books they were but they've had a, had a couple books long listed in the Bram Stoker Awards yesterday. Um, but this is Doomsday Furnace. This is a, a short story collection from Brent Michael Kelly. Um, a starship is separated from its fleet, and the captain must resort to desperate measures. A man wakes one morning to find out everyone in the world has dreamed of killing him. The embodiment of of drought has a disastrous adventure at sea. Children are offered to and sometimes taken by the thing that lives beneath the sand. A killer seeks redemption and freedom on a mountaintop. An energy station near the sun aims to permanently address mankind's energy needs. A cloud of strange and deadly radiation has appeared in Earth's orbital path. An alien presence teaches an amateur surgeon the true value of friendship. These tales and more await you inside the Doomsday Furnace, a collection of catastrophic yarns by Brett Michael Kelly. It's just sound, Some of this just sounded weird, and I was completely interested in it. Uh... So when asked if I wanted a copy, I, I happily accepted, and I do need to get this uh, read. Um, this is my fourth video I filmed. My throat is just getting dry as hell. I was going to record one more after this, but this may be it. Um... Booker Prize winner, Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. This uh, tells the tale of uh, several black women in, um, in England 
I'm looking for a time period. I think I think it. Uh, yeah, I'll just read the the flap is short. Um, Twelve central characters of this multi-voice novel lead vastly different lives. Uh, Anna is a newly acclaimed playwright whose work explores her black lesbian identity. Her old friend Shirley is a teacher, jaded after decades in London's funding-deprived schools. Carol, one of Shirley's former students, is an investment banker. Carol's mother, Brummy, works as a cleaner and worries about her daughter's lack of rootedness despite her achievements. From a non-binary social media influencer to a 93-year-old woman living on a farm in northern England, these unforgettable characters also intersect in aspects of their identities, from age to race to sexuality to class. Sparklingly witty and filled with emotion, centering voices we often see othered and written in an innovative fast-moving form that borrows techniques from poetry girl woman other is a polyphonic social novel that reminds us of everything that connects us to our neighbors even in times when we are encouraged to be split apart i have heard just absolutely fantastic things about this um i'm not going to get into the debate of whether this should have been the only winner of the booker prize um but um it probably should have, um, but I haven't read any of the books, so I, I can't really judge. But um, I did start reading it a little bit while I was um, in um, Hocking Hills in October. Uh, I took I had taken it with me, um, and I was enjoying what little I, I had read. So I, I'm looking forward to uh, getting to this this year. Um, I actually, I had pre-ordered this, um, and then I was at a, an independent bookstore in Ann Arbor, because my wife was doing a, a show, and it was a situation, where she, it, was, it was a stage reading thing, and she had a rehearsal during the day, and then a break, and then they had the reading that night. So we live about 45 minutes from Ann Arbor. So we, um, I went down, because I was going to go to the reading, so I went down there with her for her, you know, at the time that she had to go to the rehearsal, and I just went to an independent bookstore for a while while she was doing the rehearsal before they, excuse me, before they broke for dinner and we had dinner between the rehearsal and the, uh, and the show. And I was at the independent bookstore, and... The, my pre-order for this wasn't supposed to be released like according to Amazon was coming out still in a couple of weeks from when I was at the store but I was at the independent bookstore in Ann Arbor and they had several copies of it so I bought it and canceled my pre-order because I was super excited about it and I was glad I, I wanted to be able to take I knew we were leaving in a couple of weeks and I was excited to be able to buy it and take it on the trip and support an independent bookstore um, and that's where I actually bought uh the House of the Spirits from the last book haul too. Um, the, it's the Literati bookstore in Ann Arbor. So a little plug for them. Uh, they have a website. Um, Dominica by Angie Cruz. No, sorry, Dominicana by Angie Cruz. 15-year-old um, Anna Concian never dreamed of moving to America the way the girls she grew up with in the Dominican countryside did. But when Juan Ruiz proposes and promises to take her to new york city she must say yes it doesn't matter that he is twice her age or that there is no love between them their marriage is an opportunity for a close-knit family event for her entire close-knit family to eventually immigrate so on new year's day 1965 anna leaves behind everything she knows and becomes anna ruiz a wife confined to a cold six-floor walk-up in washington heights lonely and miserable anna hatches a reckless plan to escape but at the bus terminal she is stopped by caesar Juan's free-spirited younger brother, who convinces her to stay. As the Dominican Republic slides into political turmoil, Juan returns to protect his family's assets, leaving Caesar to take care of Anna. Suddenly, Anna is free to take English lessons at a local church, lie on the beach at Coney Island, dance with Caesar at the Audubon Ballroom, and imagine the possibility of a different kind of life in America. When Juan returns, Anna must decide once again to, between her heart and her duty to her family. In bright musical prose that reflects the energy and vibrancy of New York City, Dominicana is an urgent portrait of the immigrant experience and the timeless coming-of-age story of a young woman finding her voice in the world. Um, I got this one, again, as a backlist book of the month title, I think. I don't... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I bought it as a backlist title. Um, it sounded interesting. I haven't heard a ton about it, um, but uh, it sounded like something I might enjoy. 
Um, I also got Gods of Jade and Shadow uh, from Book of the Month Club. Uh, this is a recent fantasy novel. The Jazz Age is in full swing, but Cass Cassiopeia Tun is too busy cleaning the floors of her wealthy grandfather's house to listen to any fast tunes. Nevertheless, she dreams of a life far from her dusty small town in southern Mexico, as she a life she can call her own. Yet this new life seems as distant as the stars until the day she finds a curious wooden box in her grandfather's room. She opens it and accidentally frees the spirit of the Mayan god of death, who rescues her help who requests her help in recovering his throne from his treacherous brother. Failure will mean Cassiopeia's demise, but success can make her dreams come true. In the company of a, of a strange and alluring god, and armed with her wits, Cassiopeia must begin an adventure that will take her on a cross-country odyssey from the jungles of Yucatan to the bright lights of Mexico City and deep into the darkness of the Mayan underworld. Sounded good. I've heard some good things about it. Uh, so I may, I think I might have made that one my book of the month. I don't remember. I got so, lots of lots of book of the month books here. Um, the Glittering Outer Hour by Ionia Gray. This is a historical fiction. Uh, Selena Lennox is a bright young thing. Her life is a whirl of parties and drinking, pursued by the, by the press and staying on just the right side of scandal, while running from the life her parents have la have planned for. Her. Lawrence Weston is a penniless painter who is drawn into Selena's orbit one, fe one fateful night, beginning a chain of events that will have a profound effect on them both. But talent and ambition are not enough to earn Lawrence uh, a place in Selena's gilded world, and there are consequences for girls like her who break the rules. When tragedy strikes, Selena finds herself choosing what her head tells her is safe over what her heart knows is right. Spanning two decades and a seismic shift in British history as World War II approaches, Ionia Gray's Glittering Hour is an epic novel of passion, heartache, and loss. I don't find much historical fiction that is decade the decades leading up to world war ii there's a lot of world war ii historical fiction but uh i don't find much that is post world war one pre-world war ii um and dealing with those types of events i mean you know, there's plenty of novels set in the 20s but they don't necessarily go into the 30s and deal with the events that lead up to world war ii so it just sounded interesting um Scythe by Neil Schusterman I've heard great things about this series and I wanted to finally check it out I may have hauled this before when I hauled some uh, uh, YA books I had picked up and actually now that I'm thinking about it I think I did and I think it ended up in the wrong pile um, but I know I don't need to go into a ton of detail about the series it's all it's especially lately been all over the place with the third book coming out this is a, in a world where disease has been cured uh, people don't die of natural causes anymore so uh, they rely on scythes to randomly kill people. Um, this is... Let's get all three of these because this is this month's book of the month. So these are January really, January and February releases. There is um, one... Two there. I got two pre-release options in, uh, in the box this month. So the first is uh, Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popke. Uh, for readers of Rachel Cusk, Lydia Davis, and Jenny Offill, I've only heard of Rachel Cusk out of those, a compact tour de force about sex, violence, and self-loathing from a ferociously talented new voice in fiction. In her first novel, Miranda Popke writes of desire, disgust, motherhood, loneliness, art, pain, feminism, anger, envy, and guilt in language that sizzles with intelligence and eroticism. The novel is composed almost exclusively of conversations between women, the stories they tell each other and the stories they tell themselves about shame and love, infidelity and self-sabotage, and careens through 20 years in the life of an unnamed narrator, hungry for experience and bent on upending her life. Edgy, wry, shot through with rage and despair, topics of conversation introduces an audacious and immensely gifted new novelist. It's the um, told in conversation aspect of this that uh, that interested me on that one. Uh, things in Jars by Jess Kidd. I have heard good things about Jess Kidd as an author. I've never read Jess Kidd, um, but I have heard good things about her work. Uh, Mr. Flood's Last Resort. Uh, uh, being one of them that I've heard good things about. I actually might have purchased that one on my Kindle when I heard about it. I don't remember. Um, Bert, Bre 
Bridie Devine, flame-haired, pipe-smoking detective extraordinaire, is confronted with her most baffling puzzle yet, the kidnapping of Christabel Berwick, secret daughter of Sir Edmund Athel... Athelstan Berwick, a peculiar child whose reputed powers have captured the unwanted attention of collectors in this age of discovery. Winding her way through the studi streets of Victorian London, Bridie won't rest until she finds a young girl, even if it means unearthing secrets about her own past that she'd rather keep buried. Luckily, her search is aided by an enchanting cast of characters, including a seven-foot-tall housemaid, a melancholic, tattooed-covered ghost, and an uh, avuncular apothecary. apothecary. But secrets abound in this foggy underworld where nothing is quite what it seems. Blending darkness and light, Things in Jars is a mesmerizing novel that collapses the boundary between fact and fairy tale so stunning to stunningly to stunning effect and explores what it means to be human in inhumane times. Um, this, this, this starts off sounding like it's a continuation of the series, but it's not. I, at least I don't. I haven't found it to be. Um, but I, I, I am excited to finally read some Just Kid. And this is another one of the uh, pre-release novels that they had. Uh, when We Were Vikings uh, by Andrew David McDonald. This and I think Things in Jars are the, are the, were the pre-release novels. I'm not sure when they come out. I know one is in Feb. pretty sure one is in February. Um, this, is a, this is a debut novel too. Uh, sometimes life isn't as simple as heroes and villains. For Zelda, a 21-year-old Viking enthusiast who lives with her older brother, Gert, Life, yeah, with, who lives with her older brother, Gert, life is best lived with some basic rules. One, a smile means thank you for doing something small that I liked. Two, fist bumps, fist bumps and dabs equals respect. Three, strange people are not appreciated in her home. Four, tomatoes must go in the middle of the sandwich and not get the bread wet. Five, sometimes the most important things don't fit on lists. But when Zelda finds out that Gert has res resorted to some questionable and dangerous methods to make enough money to keep them afloat, Zelda decides to launch her own quest, her mission to be legendary. It isn't long before Zelda finds herself in a battle that tests the reach of her heroism, her love for her brother, and the depth of her Viking strength. When We Were Vikings is an uplifting debut about an unlikely heroine whose journey will leave you wanting to embark on a quest of your own, because after all, we are all legends in our own making. I wasn't planning to get three books for Book of the Month uh, this month. I was just going to get uh, my one, but uh, those three just all sounded so good. I had I had to, I had to get my one and, and do two and do my two editions this month. Um, next book I just got this uh, recently uh, within the past week, um, and it is Correspondence by Tim Mur. Tim Murphy. I have heard fantastic things about his book, uh, Crystal Dora, which I've been wanting to read for, for a long time. And this one sounded interesting too. Um, so I wanted to grab a copy. The world is Rita Corey's oyster. The bright and driven daughter of a Boston area Lebanese family that has risen over the generations from poor immigrants to part of the coastal elite, Rita grows up in a 1980s cultural mishmash. Corned beef and cabbage sit on the dinner table alongside stuffed grape leaves and tabbouleh, all cooked by Rita's mother, an Irish nurse who met her Lebanese surgeon husband while working in a hospital together. The unconventional yet close-knit family bonds over summers at the beach, wedding line dances, and a shared obsession with the Red Sox. Rita charts herself an ambitious path through Harvard to one of the best newspapers in the country. She is posted in cosmopolitan Beirut and dates a handsome Palestinian would-be activist. But when, he, when, she is when she is assigned to cover the America-led invasion of Baghdad in 2003, she finds herself unprepared for the war zone. Her lifeline is her interpreter and fixer Nabil al-Jumali, an equally restless young man whose dreams have been restricted by life in a, de in a deteriorating dictatorship, not to mention his own seemingly impossible desires. As the war tears Iraq apart, personal betrayal and the horrors of conflict force Rita and Nabil out of the country and into twisting uncertain fates. What lies in wait will upend their lives forever, shattering their notions of what they're entitled to in a grossly unjust world. It says continued on backflap. Epic in scope. By turn suspenseful and heartbreaking and, speak, and speaking sharply to America's current moment, Correspondence is a whirlwind story about displacement from one's own roots, the violence America often promotes both abroad and at home, and the resilience that allows families to make, remake themselves and endure even the most shocking of peoples. Now, I haven't heard much about this book in particular, but it sounded interesting, and I've heard fantastic things about Christodora, so I, I uh, wanted to grab a copy of it. Um... And last book in this haul 
is the Parisian by Isabella Hamad. And this is, I mentioned uh, in my last video that A Woman Is No Man is uh, currently on my TBR for the Reading Women prompt um, by a book by an Arab woman. This is one I could also use for this. Um, because uh, the Isabella Hamad, she she is from London, but her family is from uh, Palestine. Her family and uh, and that counts. Uh, that 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 does count for a book by an Arab woman. Um, sorry, my wife is yelling at the cats and it's distracting me a little bit. Um, but I saw this, uh, this will fit for that, and it'll also fit for a book over 500 pages. Um, so I actually have started reading it. I've read the first chapter of it, um, and I enjoy the writing style so far. Um, I saw this on Jacqueline at Six Minutes for Me's channel, and I was interested in, I, I was interested in it after hearing her talk about it. Uh, a masterful debut novel by Plimpton Prize winner Isabella Hamad, the Parisian in, illuminates a pivotal po a pivotal period of Palestinian history through the journey and romances of one young man from his studies in France during World War I to his return to Palestine at the dawn of its battle for independence. Midhat Kamal is the son of a wealthy textile merchant from Nablu. Nablu or Nablus? I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. A town in Ottoman Palestine. A dreamer, a romantic, and an in, in, asthete? I'm not sure about that one. Now, in 1914, Midhat leaves to study medicine in France and falls in love. When he returns to Nablu, Nablus to find it under British rule and the entire region erupting with nationalist fervor, he must find a way to cope with his conflicting loyalties and the expectations of his community. The story of Midhat's life develops alongside the idea of a nation as he and those close to him confront what it means to strive for independence in a world that seems on the verge of falling apart. Against the landscape of political change that continues to define the Middle East, the Parisian explores questions of power and identity, enduring love, and the uncanny ability of the past to disrupt the present. Immersive and devastating in its power, this is an elegant Elegant, richly imagined first novel from a dazzling new voice in fiction. And that's it. That is the last book in this part of the book haul. And that catches you up to date with uh, with the books I have gotten. Um, there was more in that that uh, I hadn't heard talked about a bunch. So I had to read more synopses. Uh, in that one, so apologize for this one being a little bit longer, um, but I can't, I sometimes I just have to read the synopsis because I can't tell you about a book that I don't know about because I haven't read it. Um, so anyway, uh, thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you. I honestly and truly do. Um, those who have stuck with me through the channel change, those who have been with me from the beginning, uh, thank you so, so much. Um, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you want to see more. I make I make book videos, movie videos, uh, cross stitch videos. Uh, so if any of that interests you, hit that subscribe button. Uh, it's the best way to know when I post new videos, and I'll see you all in the next one.